Here. Ms. Cawthorn, Vice Chair. Here. Mr. Tipper County, <coughs> Secretary Treasurer. Here. Jonathan Polway, Committee Woman Number One. Eddie Odyssey, Committee Woman Number Two. Here. Ronald Red Elk, Committee Woman Number Three. Here. Clyde Narcomy, Committee Woman Number Four. Here. We have a quorum. With that said, I did, you know, mention uh, the reason for the season. I'd like to call upon our our good friend. Uh, he's our gaming commissioner chair. Uh, he's one of our new promising Comanche people that stepped up. I'd like to call upon Julian this morning. Julian, we've had uh, a lot of our Comanche people that have gone home. Uh, we've had reports of cancer. We've had reports of bad health. But I sit there and look at Kaku, and she's in her 90s, and God bless you, you know. We live good lives, we live to 90, you know. So this morning, with that said, Julian, could you please say a prayer for us? Absolutely. And for the nation. Before I say my prayer, I just want to say this, this lady here, I don't, I can't remember her name, but. Uh, Inez Motol. Inez Motol. When I was born at IHS, she's the one that took care of me. Oh. At IHS. My mother here. So. Mm -hmm. It's all for a full circle, so yeah, please yeah. bow your heads in prayer. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you today in reverence to all things that are good, all things, friends, family, food. Please care, take care of those who can't take care of themselves. Please take care of our nation. Please take care of our country. These are hard times ahead of us, but we will prevail. I appreciate everything that we do, uh, all those here present today to, be, to participate in our government, all those abroad, all those who are watching today, I appreciate them. Um, please give blessings to the Comanche Nation. Please give best blessings to each of every one of our families. Appreciate you. Appreciate everything everyone does. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Today we're going to have... Uh, some really important business. Uh, this entire week, we've been going over our Comanche Nation Court. Um, you know, we've had a government for 50 years. We're on our 51st year as a government, and this is the first time we will have a judicial branch. No longer can we go up there to Anadarko and someone put us off and put us off. We're going to start taking care of our own laws. People have a gripe, they go over there, right? There we go. Uh, you know, the CBC are elected officials. They should have never played court. They should have never played jury. They should have never played prosecutor. But the way it is now, um, I believe February 1st, we'll, we'll be going live. Our book of law is about this big. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tote around. Um, <coughs> the good thing about it, people that are non-Comanche, that have taken our nation to task, we're gonna finally take them to task. Can I get a hand clap for that? <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of law. I mean, that's the beauty of law. With that said, uh, business committee, could you please go over the minutes from November? If you see something that we have not done or didn't get done, if you could uh, please bring that forward. While they're doing that, I hope everybody looks up at the screen. Um, right now, uh, it's really relevant, be it budgeting, be it where should we be at, where uh, we, we've got to have the, the right tools for where our enrollment is. And if you look up there, our minors right now, there's 4,752 minors. And I believe that's including the ones that come on today. Then we have 18 to 61 years old uh, before they become an elder. And there's 10,416. And our largest growing con uh, constituency is our elders. They have, I don't know, maybe I'm Nostradamus, Julian. I, I predicted 700, but 1,700, but it's 1,720. <clears throat> so this was the numbers as of yesterday, December 1st. Now, if we go down, whoop, let's go back here. If we go to what it was last year, uh, you can see that we had 1,616 elders. So, Willie, these numbers are for you. You're part of the Elders Council. 
Inez Moto, uh, Mr. Gailey, Mr. Pokawatchet, the elders that are in attendance today. This, uh, the baby boomers are becoming term. <laughs> We're getting big. So then we look at our minors. We've had a decrease there. It's 4,980 minors. And uh, the overall population, I'll go right to that. Here's our 13 month comparison. As you can see, the demographics have changed. Our minors, there's a decrease of 228. Some, you know, most of them have become 18. They become part of the tribal council. Like today, it's good to see a new tribal council member in our midst. Uh, then, uh, Elders, we had an increase of 104. And uh, uh, others that became a part of the tribal council over 18, we had an increase of 473. So our overall population was an increase of 349. Um, it's almost at a plateau point and the demographics are changing. This is relevant for Comanches. I wish this was brought forward 10 years ago, 20 years ago, so we could have prepared for such things. So. We are prepared. We are trying to be agile, mobile, and hostile. At the same time, we're trying to be stable. All right, uh, moving forward. I make a motion. We accept last month's minutes. Okay, ma'am, could you hold on? I got one more part of this oh, presentation. Sorry, I thought you were done. No, ma'am. Everybody always says, well, how many Comanches are there? And what is a blood quantum? So I'm going to start giving you reports on this. Our one-eighth degree of Comanche blood is 5,414, I mean, 419. Uh, those of quarter quantum, 5,260. Those of half quantum, 2,570. Those of three-quarter quantum, 428. Those are four-fourths, 613. Now, the various quantums are 2,518. All I can say is there's 16,888 nomina. And let's give them a hand clap. I mean, clap for yourselves. <laughs> That's what we are. All right. I'm done with that presentation. If uh, we'll listen to what was put on the floor, ma'am, and what was that? Motion to accept the minutes from last month. Okay, motion made by the vice chair. I do need a second to continue. I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by business committee, Red Elk. <clears throat> All those in favor for accepting the minutes of November, please signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> All those not in favor, same sign. All right, minutes have passed. We're going forward to our resolutions of the day. We are going to resolution number 13617. This list includes the names of applicants who have been verified as eligible pursuant to Article 3, Section 1C. All descendants of allottees eligible for membership under the provision of Section 1A of the article have an one eighth or more degree of Indian blood. And now, therefore, be it resolved. The CBC today will accept the verification of eligibility for the applicants as shown on list 1076 by the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office. So be it further resolved that the Comanche Nation Enrollment Office notify the eligible applicants by letter of their approved membership and further that the enrollment member be provided information concerning their enrollment, including name, date of birth, roll number, social security number, and degree of Comanche blood. Mr. Clyde Narcomi, how many are there? There's a total of 20. Total of 20. And there's a total of uh, one eighth, there's 14. Okay. With that said, business committee, I need somebody to bring this question forward in the form of a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution Number 136-17. Thank you, sir. To continue, I do need a second. I'll second it. Seconded by our vice chair. Business committee to approve resolution number 136-17. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Those in disagreement, same sign. Resolution number 136-17 has passed. 
And I hope my sister today will get I've got the duck in for this new Comanche. And here are the names. Juliana Chettleson, Yvette Lynn Chettleson, Hunter Faye Klein, Lowell Klein, Rachel Collins, Branton Goombay, Aurora Harris, Jackson Robert Hickson, Ariana King Tarvin, Cole Jean Mestis Watts, Cheyenne Pika, Yay. Cameron Pulo, Layla Proctor, Zachary Sasser, Eduardo Tarvin, Sicily Maricela Tarvin Garza, Nathaniel Tunips, Ayana Turrieta, come on, Damian Yellowfish, Julian Yellowfish. Before we give these guys a great hand clap, I was outside telling this uh, young lady that became 18, that became a Comanche today, that you have all the opportunity and all the tools in the world to do anything in the world. We will help you with your higher education. We will help you if you need a career. We can help you in the tools that will make you a successful Comanche. And with that said, welcome Cheyenne and welcome all you other Comanches. People think we just go through a procedure here. That's how we feel. Uh, it's humbling, it's humbling. We will go to resolution number 13717. This is a resolution for the fire suppression for the prevention and recovery of new pathways. It's our Comanche Nation Court. No, it's not. It's the New Pathways Building? Okay, well, I'm sorry. Okay, and that's right over here on Mattachai Road. Okay. So, the Comanche Constitution, Article 6, Section 7, establishes this business committee as the duly elected official body designated to conduct business. Whereas, the Comanche Nation Prevention and Recovery Building, located at 8501 Northwest Mattachai Road, the fire suppression system will adhere to Oklahoma State Fire Code I-1, Condition 1, and will be inspected and approved by the Oklahoma State Fire Marshal. The fire suppression system will safeguard the employees and clients at both facilities. Whereas, the Comanche Business Committee is authorized to approve capital improvement funding under current approved Comanche Nation Tribal Government Property and Procurement Policies and procedures by resolution number 02216. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Comanche Business Committee approves the capital improvement funding for the fire suppression system and authorizes the approval of the contract submitted to the Capital Improvement Department by advanced fire protection in the amount of $149,906. That consists of a one-year contractor's warranty. This is resolution number 13717 for this business committee. To move forward, I need someone to entertain a motion to this question. I make a motion we accept resolution 137-17. Motion made by the vice chair. I have one question. Jimmy, uh, I am so glad that the fire marshal can come on trust property and get this done. This property, is it on trust or simple fee? I don't know. It's on simple fee. Simple. Okay, so that's good. The, farm, the state fire marshal has really been working with us. So, you know, you guys passed a resolution where we had a safety code, building codes. So we're wanting to ensure that all of our properties are um, fitted with um, security features, safety features because it impacts you know, our tribal members that are in these properties and we want to make sure that they're That's safe. True. So we're very fortunate that State Park Fire Marshal, even though they don't have jurisdiction on trust land, but on our simple fee properties, they're working with us on it. So the motion has been made by our Vice Chair. Moved I second. Seconded by Business Committee Odyssey. All those in favor of resolution number 13717 to continue, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Resolution number 13717 has passed. We'll move forward to the Adams property. This is a resolution authorizing the submission of the fee to trust application for the <coughs> Adams property. Before I start this, Dennis, was there ever application made for this, ever? Robert? No, because the building was not completed, so we didn't make one earlier. Okay, all right. So here we go. Whereas the Comanche Nation <coughs> Business Committee has deemed it necessary to revise the legal description to a true north bearing legal description to meet acceptable standards, standards used by the Bureau of Indian Affairs on fee property. Hereinafter, known as the Adams property, located on 60 acres of reservation land within the exterior boundaries of the KCA <coughs> reservation in Comanche County, Oklahoma. More particularly described as follows. Uh, well, I can go through the Indian meridians and the tract and all that. Believe you me, Dennis, where's this at? <laughs> it's with the police station, fire station, and environmental officers. There you go. <laughs> right up through because <coughs> i got about i don't know five thousand words on the description that's where it is so whereas the adams property is the location of the comanche nation police and fire departments whereas the comanche business committee is in support of tribal self-determination and has determined it is in the best interest of the nation to obtain approval of the united states department of the interior for placement of the adams property into trust now Therefore, be it resolved that the chairman of the Comanche Nation is authorized to act on behalf of the Comanche Nation to direct and oversee the preparation of the trust application to include the authorization of any surveys, appraisals, abstracts, title insurance, environmental reviews, or necessary services and reports, and is further authorized to execute and submit all documents needed for the trust acquisition application to the BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs. Resolution number 13817 is before you, Business Committee. I need a second to continue. I mean a motion, I'm sorry. Let me reword that. I need a motion to continue. I make the motion. Okay, sir. Motion has been made to move forward. I do need a second. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. Seconded by Business Committee Red Elk. Resolution number 13817, Business Committee to accept this. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Resolution number 13817 has passed. How do you say it, Jimmy? Nama Go ahead. Come on, man. No, no. Nama Tekwan. How many? What does that mean, Mr. Red Elk? Comanche Court of Law. Wow, there it is. Mm. Here we go, a resolution establishing the Comanche Nation Court, authorizing court codes and authorizing action related to the assumption of full judicial authority by the Comanche Nation to occur on February 1st, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the CBC <coughs> does hereby approve and authorize to be effective on February 1st, 2018, that all judicial authority of the Comanche Nation will be administered by the Comanche Nation Tribal Court, which is to be housed within the geographical, geographical confines of the Comanche Nation Indian Country, and be it further resolved that the CBC does hereby approve and authorize to be effective on February 1st, 2018, the attached Title I, Comanche Nation Tribal Courts, Title II, Comanche Nation Criminal Code and Procedures, Title III, Comanche Nation Rules of Civil Procedure, Title IV, Comanche Children and Family Relations Code, and further authorizes the Comanche Nation Court to establish court rules and forms to facilitate the efficient operation of the Comanche Nation Tribal Court. And be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee does hereby authorize all action necessary to notify appropriate officials of the BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, of the February 1st, 2018 assumption 
of judicial authority by the Comanche Nation and be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee does hereby direct appropriate officials of the Bureau of Indian Affairs to undertake all actions necessary to transfer all Comanche Nation cases and case files from the Court of Federal Regulations on February 1, 2018, and that all other assistance, including federal funding provided for the administration of Comanche Nation judicial activities by the Bureau of Indian Affairs be transferred to the Comanche Nation on February 1, 2018, and be it further resolved that the Comanche Business Committee today authorizes all other action necessary consistent with the intent of this resolution and that the Comanche Tribal Administrator is authorized to assist the Comanche Business Committee to undertake all action necessary to see that the intent of this resolution is accomplished. A historic day is today. Business Committee in our capacity. Resolution number 13917 is before you for I acceptance. Make, I do need that motion. I make the motion. The motion I second it. And seconded by Mr. I third it. And thirded it. <laughs> and fourth it did. Yes. Okay. It's a great day for the nation. Yes, it is. Business Committee. All those in acceptance of resolution number 13917. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those in disagreement, walk out of the room. No, no I tease. <laughs> All those in disagreement, same sign. Thank you. You will have preview. We will have kiosk. Once our court is open, you will have preview to all codes. You will have the significance of it all is seeing where the court could pay for itself. The thing is this, you have issues. It doesn't have to come to elected. It goes over there for result. With that said, a big day. I give Jimmy stand up. Stand up, Jimmy. Burn, stand up, burn. Yeah, give burn. a hand to burn. All right. Give a hand to burn. Now, the guy that worked the hardest, he was his lawyer. <laughs> and it wasn't Rick. We had no interference here. We were kicked out of every one of their meetings. Why? Why? You should. Should Donald Trump be in there telling the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, to do things? No. So that's where we were. Um, sorry. Did you mention the name of the attorney? That, or the what Go was right this? ahead, Jimmy. Jimmy, please. Ken Belmar. Ken Belmar. Ken. And what was his credentials to do this? Well, he's been practicing. Could you law. tell us how he got here? That that would sure. be good. I would sure. like for everyone to hear that. Sure. So um, this process began, of course, you know, for a number of years. How many years, Willie, have the people been voting on the court? Ten years. Ten, Ten years, years of people have been voting on the court system, and it's never happened. So um, the committee uh, passed a resolution ten months ago. Uh, putting me responsible for soliciting and giving the expertise to start the process of developing the trouble court. We did a nationwide RFP. We got attorneys from across the country that applied for the position to help us codify and establish court procedure. So uh, the one that was selected was Ken Belmar. He's call, he's call Indian. So uh, he has, we've met with him regularly every month. We've met with him um, he has a legal team that assists him um, uh, from his office, so he has all these uh, legal experts to uh, his benefit to help you know formulate this. He's worked with a number of other tribal uh, courts, helped develop and establish it. Um, but he was very much um, excited about working with the Comanches <coughs> because, you know, with the team that was selected, everybody has their opinions. Um, our main focus was ensuring that there was no political influence, that we had the best of choices for judge selections. You know, we all had our own kind of perspectives about the law. We all, and we did have background in those areas. I personally, you know, many years ago was um, applied for to go to law school, considered it, and but then decided and was accepted, went to ASU, um, 
the Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law, but then in Tucson and decided it was too hot down there and I didn't want to spend my days fighting. And then ironically, I should have completed it, but all of us have that background and experience, education. Uh, so the team that was selected, and regardless of the person, it was the seat. So, you know, your chief of police, whether the Burns here or not, the TA, whether I'm here or not, the court clerk, the grants, and our court clerk, who also has a law degree. Could you mention his name? Please? Yes, Jared Ellis, um, and has worked for the courts and practice law. So we've had a team of experts really involved in the process. And um, it was a democratic process. But I think, you know, for clarity to our, our tribal membership, we didn't create rules of law. We codified the rules of law. So we didn't like establish, like say, you know, animal cruelty. We didn't create a new rule for that. What we did was we implemented what the federal standards are. So now what has been brought before this committee, and you have to keep in mind that we were just tasked with, you know, bringing this forward. So now we'll continue that process. And then after the selections, the interviews, and all that goes forward, which again, I remind you, we have legal experts on that team then it will go to the committee for either confirmation or not. So there will be more involvement, but um, that's what we were tasked to do, and it's a very historical moment because we all you know, hope to be able to have a real um, judicial system to adjudicate whatever our issues may be. So for me personally, when they tasked me with that, I was like kind of angry actually because they just <laughs> threw it on me and I didn't know nothing about it, but yet, when I'm tasked to do something, you know, I always give it 100%. And so we're very fortunate to have had, you know, the right uh, uh, attorneys, you know, apply for those positions to help move our nation into the future. So the court is being built right behind Watchtaker Hall. It's on trust property. You heard Mr. Um, Red Elk, you know, and that's a traditional word, that non court of law. That's not like, you know, a made-up word today. It's a traditional rule because we had traditional law. And, of course, all of those things were considered in the development of this uh, uh, civil procedure, you know, court of rules. So we're very excited to, you know, bring this forward, move it forward, so that, again, the people do have a venue when they have issues to hear it in, in a legal, professional way. Even the selections of judges coming forward, there's a minimum qualification. They have to have been practicing law. They have to be licensed in this state. You know, um, they have to have experience in Indian law. So there is a lot more to it. So I just want to assure you, the people, that what we have worked on, you know, has not been uh, a personal thing for us, but a fair process to consider every single Comanche. And our grant writer, of course, you know, you reported had received a $1.2 million grant for special jurisdiction. So now we have a remedy even for non-Indians that come onto our properties, you know, and create stuff because in the past they've been able to like do things and we have no court to adjudicate it. You know, they throw it out, they don't want to deal with us. They don't want to deal with Indian or Indian law outside here. So it's a really important day. And then we even have our other courts, our sister tribes, I guess you'd say, that are interested in being able to bring their <coughs> cases forward as well. So. So with that said, you know, I'm really excited and I appreciate this committee and all you guys have done to move us from that 10 year of um, approval to uh, the reality of a fair you know, judicial process. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that opening of it? February the 1st. February. What time? <laughs> Nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours, nine to four. How <coughs> that tea? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's 18 other tribes, nations that have specialized courts. Uh, we're one of them. We're one of them now. So, is it big time? Yeah, we're big time government now. It's not more government. At least we have judicial law. Okay, with that said, we have some new business, I believe, Mr. Pika. Before you start, Willie, uh, is Mr. Gailey here? Mr. Pokawatchip? Uh, Mr. T. Dark? Okay. Mr. Colon, where's Johnny? He's not here. Okay. What was his appointment, sir? 
Who was his candidate? I don't know. I never did hear. The young man with braids that just walked out, Yakis. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Robles. 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 Mr. Robles. Robles. Mr. Robles, was. hopefully yes. he'll here. stay here. Yeah. Okay. He's here. What we're going to do after Mr. Pika's uh, uh, communication, I got to give, hold on, Willie, I, I got to give some, uh, uh, what, some happenings is happening this week coming up. Uh, you're here, Mr. Robles. Raise your hand. Okay. Mr. Robles is here. All right. <laughs> so, Just right here. <laughs> this, uh, this Wednesday, I believe our Comanche Nation elders, elders council, are going to have a Christmas party. Christmas, My cr party. Christmas party. And that will be at? At the Apache Convention Center. Apache. Wow. Apache Casino. All right. Okay. Uh, we booked it for 175. <coughs> okay. All 10 right. o'clock to 1231. Okay. We have okay. Uh, entertainment, prizes. All right. Giveaways. Great. And a nice sit down lunch. Wow. Nice. That's really nice. I hope you can attend. All okay. Of now that's Wednesday. This Wednesday coming up. Coming up. Okay. Right. Now and this Fox. Thursday, all you Comanche Nation churches out there, Buha County, uh, our Walkway Thug Gun churches, we are going to have a prayer breakfast. Jimmy, did we say 9 a.m.? Okay. We are going to have a prayer breakfast at 9 a.m. Our, na our nation does distribute uh, money for our churches on Christmas. And this year, I got to tell you, I was at Red River Casino Hotel, Jarvis, yesterday, visiting with the GM and the hotel manager. This dude thought a lady pulled up. Man, she had about 30 toys, big ones. So, you know, the toy drive is huge. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great for the churches. Uh, I mean, this is the... Jimmy, have you ever seen that many? Not uh, like this year. Wow. This year we Were you greeted? Did they come to the door and greet you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but no, these people were pulling up as customers. You know, they're there for entertainment, but they know the toy drive is going on, and I guess they get some free play. There you go. It's a wash. Uh, but uh, on, 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 on this Thursday, the prayer breakfast will be all churches. Uh, they'll get their the monies that our people vote on in our budget. Uh, for the churches and also throughout the week through Christmas they'll be able to come up and get the toys allocated for the churches and uh, it's not a, a matter of being covetous at this time of year it's a matter of hey just it's for our children so this is really good um, also the big day man who's all elders raise your hand everybody over 62 y'all better be there this Friday y'all better be there I see what they got Man, it's almost too gaudy. It, but hey, it's this is your nation. From big screen televisions, poinsettias, to even cookware, to free play, to Applebee's, to chilies, to... Robert doesn't like it too well, but we said, hold on, buddy, hold on. Uh, you know, and there'll be bags of candy. Bags elders, of candies. Uh, we're going to have some entertainment. Travis Comacheat, if you're listening, Mr. Navaquay, if you're listening, be there. It'll be this Friday, Santa Claus will be there. It'll be at the Great Plains Coliseum again. That's the only place that has all this room because we like to have our vendors from our nation there. Now, if we did it over there where you guys are going, they don't want the vendors there. They want our people to put that, hit that plastic button and make some money. So anyway, it's going to be this Friday, you guys. Uh, vendor setup is 8 a.m. Vendor setup. And proceedings to start about what, 10 a.m.? Yep. 10 a.m. Uh, when does it end? I guess when the last point said it goes out that door. So it's going to be a great day for the elders. Plus, guess what else? I'm, I already forgot it. Going to get your check, $1,000 check. There you go. So that's what's happening. Uh, Bob, there's something else I'm missing. What am I missing here? What about Santa Claus? Is he going to be yeah, there? That's it. That's it? That's it. I believe Santa Claus is there. He's a Juris Doctorate. He's coming in. <laughs> Employees Christmas. Employees Christmas party. Go ahead, Eddie, announce that. At the 22nd at the Hilton Garden Inn at 7 p.m. And who is that for? The employees. The employees, okay. That's true. <clears throat> 
I believe the casino employees are going to have some big shindig. The, the sad thing on casino employees is 24-7. When we're off on Christmas, we're off on Thanksgiving, they're working. You know, they're the ones that provide the lion's share of all revenue to our nation. And they're always working. So I hopefully whatever is given uh, for appreciation as far as Christmas for the employees, um, you know, I, I can never give them enough thanks and gratitude while we're sleeping, they're still making money for us. So with that said, that's a big week this week, Amber. So, uh, and of course our tribal employees and people from the tax commission, I believe, they're gonna be all be there to help out every elder, give them, get them a plate, make sure they, there better not be one elder that goes home with nothing, <laughs> Susan. <laughs> all right. With that said, Willie, go right ahead. You got the floor, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to start out with, I'll let you know we had elections uh, last November, so we have two new representatives for the Elder Council. We have Gwen Kirchy, she's our vice chairman uh, for the organization. And then also we have uh, Phyllis Cosby, uh, she's a treasurer. So we've got change of hands, and so everybody's getting used to the system, and making checks and everything else. But, uh, yeah, Yay. we have two new people to carry on, so uh, uh, they're in for two years. We have two-year round rotation. So, well, that, hopefully y'all gave an award to Adele and... Uh, yeah, Adele got the Oklahoma Elder Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miss Mice. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was great, too. That was it back in October. Also, just update that I gave you some information on the tree marker tree that we've been working on. I gave you copies, it's a work in progress, so what I want you to just make comments, give me feedback on changes, because what we have set up, we have already purchased a, a stone, it's gonna be just a piece of granite, two by three, probably about 12 inches thick, we're gonna just drop in the ground. That way nobody can fool with it, you know, if you got a stand or something, they'll break it or things like that. So we just figured something that will drop in the ground beside it. And we'll finish up with a ceremony or something whenever weather allows. After we get this done, but we'll start with the marker, get it done, and have a little ceremony. And just to mark something that, uh, you know, uh, ties to our Comanche people from years ago. It's amazing that uh, they're still coming up and finding those that haven't been cut down. So we want to keep up with that. Is Mr. Yes. Atchabit still involved? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he will be there, and I, I kind of work with him on the wording. So uh, if you can do that, I'll pick that up next week sometimes. And if there's any comments, or just let me know. You know, give me your thoughts, and we'll put everything together and uh, come up with a wording for the plaque. Hey Dustin, is there any way we can get this type of wording on our website so all of our members will see what's going to happen in Texas? Okay. Where's this uh, tree located at? It's uh, southwest of uh, Wichita Falls. Southwest of Wichita Falls. Mm -hmm. We figured we'd try to make a day trip out of it for our elders. Take a group of elders, it's, you know, it's their project they started. So uh, just make a day trip and uh, CBC members and uh, you know, have a little ceremony and wind it up. That sounds good. And that's just one to come. Maybe we'll find more. That's okay. Good. That sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank that's you, it. Willie. That's good. Okay. Uh, Realty departments here. Comanche Nation Crime Stoppers. Okay. Luther Papachico. Mr. Yakas. And Jim, I already acknowledged you. Business committee, I am going to call for a special CBC meeting for <coughs> December 14th. This will be the first one I call for. It will be on December 14th, 10 a.m. Uh, by the Constitution, we need 10-day notice. This will be an open meeting. So on December 14th at 10 a.m. Uh, why do we need to do it with all the nice festivities going on for Christmas? Uh, a lot of business has to get done and not put off. So uh, I'd like to bring that forward if somebody could entertain a motion to that. 
I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion made for a special meeting on December 14th to come to legal quorum. Motion made. Need a second? I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Mr. Redout. All those in favor for a special CBC meeting to be held on December 14th, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those in disagreement, same sign. Okay. That said, oh, yes, Amber. Question. Yes. Um, I have packets with the committee on our new address change form. I just wanted to know if, if you guys received them or if you had a chance to review them. I want to go into the new year with the new form. But right. I wanted to make sure you guys approved them. Did you make enough copies? I made extra just in case you guys don't have them. Where is Julie? Amber, we can address it on the 14th. Okay. That'd be yeah. good. I know I got mine. Okay. <laughs> Amber's being tasked. She's our only constitutional program in our nation. Um, you know, we got to have rules of engagement. We can't have somebody that's from Mars come in here and say, hey, my child's a Comanche, you know, let that go, you know. So she's being charged to do many different things. So thank you, Amber. Yes, Mr. Gabby. Uh, I'd like to hand out this uh, uh, 18 U.S. Code Section 68 uh, for the CBC and for the well, it's for the Gaming Commission and Board and for there's the no CBC. board, sir. Yeah, it's uh, Mr. Narcomi. Yeah, I never knew that. Uh, there's no gaming board. Yeah, there. I never knew that this was. Uh, well, I knew everybody knows that there, there was an embezzlement uh, statute, but uh, I didn't know there was one from David. You know, <coughs> gaming establishments on uh, Indian lands has been on the statute since uh, oh nine, I believe. But uh, it's pretty heavy. I mean, uh, it surprised me. Uh, one. Over one thousand dollars for officers, employees. It's a uh, fine up to one million and up to twenty-five years in prison, or both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, twenty years, not twenty-five. But I just, I just thought that, you know, all commanders should know this. You know, concerning our gaming. You know. But. Uh, Cause we got a lot of well, <laughs> we got we had well. I, I don't know what to say. We got a lot of corruption there. We did. Now, I like our our <laughs> gaming board and commission to do some research on that. You know, look up support. Look well, up the past. Uh, Gabby, you know, to, in America, in America, the United States yep. of America, okay. you know, everybody through our law is innocent until proven guilty. But at the same time, you know, that's a really lengthy charge you're throwing out there. But guess where you can adjudicate it at? Where can you adjudicate this? No, where can you adjudicate this, your, your, your actual accusation? Where can you adjudicate this? Where can you find justice on what you just said? Oh, yeah, well, you just wait on it. No, where do you find it now, Gabby? February 1st, your Comanche Nation court will be open. Evidence? I don't know. What are you are you listening to me? Our Comanche Nation court will be open oh, oh. on February first. Bring it there. Yeah. Yeah. File a Everybody, charge. IRS. File a charge. Auditors, uh, okay. With that said. Yeah. With that said, yeah. I'm going to ask off this. On one another. Gabby. <laughs> love you, man. Uh, finding stole. Uh, finding uh, bank accounts <laughs> with a lot of money in there. You know all oh. that. Hello. Hi. How you doing, Miss Cable? I'm I mean, Miss Burgess, my bad. Um, I had a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what are the plans for the college? As oh, as, I know it's shut down, yeah. and I know people are moving. Um, I guess my question is, um, will there be um, tutoring offered for kids of all ages? That's the plan. We yes. have renamed it to the Comanche Nation Education Center. Okay. What we were finding out, uh, I made a big old Facebook post this morning about the impact money we bring in to Lawton, Apache, Cash, Walters. We bring in so much money, but we're getting no bang for our buck. Um, so what we're wanting to do is from our youth program through our K through 12 program, 
And I know how you work with the youth, Tanisha, and I applaud you on that. This place here has to be that one place. It has to be that one place where our children be at daycare all the way up until the 12th grade. It has to be your start for a great future. Jimmy, can you give us an update where we're at there? Well, I gotta tell you, uh, Jimmy, once again, we're tasking with so many things. He's finally got some help now. So go right ahead, Mr. Atterbury. Okay, so actually Friday, yesterday, it's like, you know, they've started kind of the move. So we've spent this time since it's changed to the education center to kind of rehab, repair, you know, had leaks in the roof. The auditorium needed a um, entire new um, heating and cooling system. They had window units, so I'm sure the elder council appreciates that, as well as everybody else that uses that facility. But um, a new roof on the gym, a new storage um, facilities being built there. So the programs that are part of the educational system are actually in the process now of moving. So this week, some of them will be closed down for the actual move itself. So the phone lines, everything will go with them. So um, it's a much more professional type setting. We have new doors in there, glass doors, real office type uh, setting instead of those dark, heavy doors. And, um, so all of that's kind of moving forward, and all those programs are moving in there. Uh, there is an area that's dedicated specifically to tutoring. We reserve space for those type of activities as well. Uh, the programs are partnered together. We have the Associate Administrator of the Educational um, uh, Resolution. That's Jamesina Mendoza, who is housed down there, directly working with me to facilitate all those things that have to happen. Everything for making sure that there's emergency access, you know, a safety plan. So all that's moving steadily ahead. I mean, from the time that you know uh, the college kind of withdrew their application and then the transition to the educational center, we've been steadily kind of addressing all the deficiencies to move them into a safe environment and have everything repaired. Um, I'd also like to touch uh, on the, because I know there's been some questions out there about the funding as well. When they, they quit the money they had in the bank, all of that is still in the reserved account. Mr. Patipicani and this committee has ensured that all those funds are kind of sequestered, secured, you know, for further discussions with the nation itself. Um, so we continue to utilize that closeout end of the year budget to do the remodel, which is a minimal. We've had our capital improvement program involved, our own guys. You know, Mr. Popachico uh, back here is one of those employees that has helped along the way as well. So uh, everything's moving forward. Higher education is the last one, and they're slowly moving things as well. And at that point, they're communicating. So we'll actually hope to have you know the space used for tutoring. We always there. They use it right now for training. They had a training this last Thursday, I believe it was. Uh, workforce did. So it's a really exciting time because they're actually instead of just you know here in these different offices in the same facility working together. So some very positive things happening there as well. Thank you. And today, I want to add on. Robert and I were kind of tasked together uh, to revamp the youth program. Uh, we've got to have the best out there mentoring our youth. They got to be in the schools, not sitting around here. You know, in the schools. Uh, so the way the uh, youth program resolution was written, this guy wrote it. I'm sorry, this guy, Mr. Tipicani <laughs> wrote it. And it was based off education. You know, it was based off education. So we gotta make it relevant again. Uh, the great thing about it is the finances are pooled. So there's more for higher ed, there's more for tutoring. Our daycare systems have to be involved. These language guys, it's just all turnkey, we got to. And like what you're doing with our youth as far as you know, athletics, what Comanche Boy does with all of our Comanche kids, we gotta encompass all four, all four. Mind, you know, your, your health, uh, your body, and of course, the most important, your spirituality. So, I, I'm excited. I mean, with the website, what these guys are doing, what our Native American church is doing. I gotta give a report. New Year's Day, all chapters want to meet here for our nation, not at someone's home, right here. And I said, it's open. It is open. You know, if y'all need more, put four teepees up, five teepees up. When they're praying for us, 
for some reason or another, that prayer just puts the hand of God of our nation, you know? Politics aside, that, that's what's kept us together. Me and Nico were raised the poorest of poor in Lawton. I didn't think we'd even become adults, Nico. But look at us, you know? Comanches are more than conquerors, and that's just my mantra. Hate to go on a soapbox like that, but Tanisha has struck a chord. I have a question for Ms. Burgess. Sure. Tanisha, isn't there a JOM or anything that helps with that? Not very or do much. they still have? Not I'm asking do, her. We do have the Johnson and Malley Committee. Oh. I actually was just appointed back on there um, a month ago, and we are trying to get that under control. And as of right now, um, our coordinator, she's not able to tutor. She's tutoring two children at a time. And when um, I inquired about it, specifically my child, because I was having problems with, with the school, he was, there was something he wasn't catching when it came to learning. Mm -hmm. And Cash's only resolve was to put him back in, the, in kindergarten. And that wasn't an option for me because he was only um, lacking in one, in one particular area, which was reading. Mm -hmm. He was doing great in all the other subjects. So when I approached, um, our coordinator, she had uh, expressed to me that she was only tutoring my child for 10 minutes a day. Oh, uh, Ten, yeah. That's not enough time to do anything. When on the other hand, the school was telling me that they were tutoring, she was tutoring my child for 30 minutes a day. That's a big difference. And I was like, well, that's not what they were telling me. And they were trying to push us, put, make, him, make us put him back in kindergarten. And that wasn't an option. So what we had, we had to um, do, a, do a lot of thinking. Um, moving around finances, and we had to put him in Sylvan Learning Center. Oh, that's good. And he's doing, that's well, good. it's good, but it's very it's expensive. expensive. Oh, no. And um, we're fortunate enough to be able to afford it barely, and that's why I'm here, because I want to know, because I've had other parents ask me, you know, um, message me, ask me passing by, hey, you seen your child goes to Sylvan. He's doing great now. Mm -hmm. um, is it working? Yes, it is, but I, I just feel that um, I know I'm not the only parent in this position. I know there's other parents out there that have, that have children with learning But you are on that JOM committee? Yes. Now? So yes. you'll be able to let us know how we'll that's We'll be able, yeah, and this next do so. one. Because, and for me, you know, I, I want to be able to, if our children, our children have to learn at the early sure. age, how do we expect them to graduate and go into college if they can't even read at the kindergarten level, the you first grade you. level? You bet. So yeah. that, that's where I'm coming. Can I, I want to just add something else because I mean, you know, that's so important what Tanisha is sharing with us here. But I want to assure you guys that, you know, our programs, because, you know, our IM Indian program, uh, our diabetes program, uh, voc rehab, uh, prevention and recovery, and our youth program, they're all partnering together to kind of work on a youth leadership program as well as address these kind of deficiencies because, you know, um, all of us recognize that, you know, we haven't really, and, and Dr. Peter Worry was in the schools this week, as far as I understand, and our higher education program is highly involved in this. So that's something that, you know, all of us like have really been looking at, and we've been discussing, we've been meeting regularly, and we're really trying to uh, work collectively to, to address these type of issues. We have young students that fall through the cracks and have for a long yeah. time. Those with disabilities, they're like the, um, they're like the uh, left behind group of our youth. And there is a title for that, No Child Left Behind. Yes, yes. yes, and so, you know, in all these activities that we do, whether it's the student services, ensuring that, you know, the kids get their back to school um, uh, funds and needs and stuff, you know, in the past, it was a first come, first serve basis, but we have worked hard and I have been really, you know, they'll tell you, it's like, you know, I have just really aggravated them because <laughs> I've insisted that they, with enrollment, they can get the numbers and know where every one of these kids <coughs> are and reach out to every one. They're talking about sending out flyers to these kids, giving them mail, letting them know that we're out there and what services we can provide. So uh, I assure you that these programs are working together to consider those because some of these kids are falling through the problems <coughs> and um, all of us fought our way to get, and we were fortunate to have support of our family members you know, our grandparents, different ones, our community that lifted us up so that we could get our education. And so uh, we're really concerned about these are our future leaders. Yes. And so these are the type of uh, scenarios that, you know, these programs are really uh, 
working on changing. So when you bring this information forward, then that gives you know us an opportunity to really consider what are we lacking or what are we missing. So I would say to you at this point in time, I would like for you to reach out to uh, start with um, higher education, visit with them a little bit, and then um, they will direct you with the other programs to figure out how can we help you, how can they help you with your issues with you know uh, kids that need you know, a little bit of a different attention. Yeah. So, so that's what I would encourage you to reach out to higher ed. Thank you. Tanisha, and you, you know. Tanisha, you and George. And all the pro bono work that Dr. Pee Wee Wardy is doing right now, it's all a combination of togetherness. You guys are doing this pro bono. You're doing it out of the love of our children. And the thing is, you know, Dr. Pee Wee Wardy, he has really taken a big lead. Uh, Robert and I, we tasked a lot of the superintendent, hey, you give us some numbers. They're wanting us to build some big sports complex on our land. You give us some numbers. Have we seen the numbers? Right here. No. Uh, anyway but Tanisha that's where I'd like to go uh, this gentleman here Julian with charter schools and uh, Dr. Pee Wee Wardy and the task force they got going up yes sir yeah um, in addition to this consolidated effort to have the Comanche Nation Education Center to have addressing of these issues to encourage parents to stay involved and move and help our children as well as get data you know I think it's also beneficial and I'd highly encourage the current council to consider adopting an education law. You have we have a living, breathing court system, right. so here we go. So We just talked about that. I, I would encourage some sort of task force or working group that can really look I'll at how that. to describe and codify an education, a centralized right. education law for the nation. Right. This is important because No Child Left Behind has been overridden or on the federal side through the Every Student Succeeds Act. There are two important sections in ESSA. Section 111A says that the state of Oklahoma has to consult with tribes when they create state plans for education on a four-year basis. The second section, 8538 of ESSA, also says that every school district or LEA, local education agency, has to consult with tribes for data. Now these are important because if they don't consult then we should have an enforcement mechanism there to you say go. I love it. that they don't Good receive job. the federal funds. That's where we need to be. If we, if we do not ask, they're not going to give. Right. Robert and I, Susan, we task that superintendent to come forward. These, and not yet. These school no. systems receive federal funds for Native students. A lot of we have to ensure money. that they go to our Native children and our students in these school systems. I have no, no quorum with public school systems. I believe in public education because it makes a public citizen. Now, to take that a step further, I believe that our tribal citizens are the most special in the world, you bet. especially our Comanche Nation citizens. So with that being said, an education law would really help us implement and consolidate a lot of these efforts to bring higher education together with pre-K, K-12, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> there are working manuals out there available online through the Native American Rights Fund, National Indian Education Association, Oklahoma Council for Indian Education, etc., um, as well as my organization that I work with, Tadna. You know, there are there are resources out there. So I I would suggest some sort of ad hoc working group. I'm not suggesting or implying that there's this is a paid working group or anything like that to that nature. Educators and volunteers for education are the most selfless people in the world. Most selfless, and I've seen it. Sure. So, you know, we mean well for students. I believe we can get this done. And uh, with the new court coming February 1st of 2018, this is the right time to strike. Sure is, Julie. said something. Very Thank good. You. Way to go. I love that. Uh, I, I pointed, well, that's wrong. Do my lips like that. <laughs> Willie Pika in Wisconsin, out of all 49 states, Wisconsin has been proactive for all from Menominee, Ojibwe. Who did you work for, Willie? I'm sorry. Did you work for the Menominee? No, I was a uh, part of the pool. Yeah, but I in was within the system then. Yeah. They advocated so much that they're excluded from all other 49 because they have such exclusivity for Native Americans. Willie, join the board. You're an educator. Our uh, committee man, Odyssey, educator. Committee man, Red Elk, educator. We have so many educators. And man, we need a bond together right now, 
right now. Um, right now. So, but that said, uh, Jarvis, you had one question. Yeah, I do. Uh, well, I know that uh, this property right here that we're on right now was given to us by the old man Polkadot. Okay. Now, it's been brought to my attention that uh, they were just wanting a simple little action taken in changing this Bingo Road to Pocono Road. And so I told them I'd come up here and talk to you guys about it and see, you know, present it to the CDC and see if they could change it. It's a Hakka. Hakka. Who? Who? Uh, the Big Bowl family. Okay. And so that's, that's something that, you know, you guys can pass over whatever. If you can change it, it's fine. We will talk about this in executive session, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jarvis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to executive session. Luther, are you still here? Maybe. <laughs> there, there, there went out. Okay, Luther will be first. Could I please have Mr. Tedar, uh, Mr. George Tadenapper, and Mr. Robles, and Mr. Pupawetchit? And Mr. Gailey, please, please come forward, would you? Sir, Mr. Chairman. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. <coughs> Just come forward, please. We're going to call upon y'all right after the executive session, but I want you to have that. George. Mr. Rollins. Why don't you just look over this briefly? Where is Papa Watch It? Mr. Copetti, do you know who Mr. Papa Watch It is? Jarvis? No. <laughs> With that said, Business Committee, I, I, I would like for someone to call for a motion for us to go to executive session, please. I make a motion to go into executive session. Motion made by our Vice Chair to go to executive session. I need a second. I'll second. Second by the Secretary Treasurer. All those in favor for executive session, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those in disagreement, same side. Hi, yes ma'am. Uh, I was just I was just gonna mention that uh, about those tutors, they helped my granddaughter when she was in school and she won a scholarship and she went to Europe because really? of those, those tutors she was going to, you know, because she, you know, needed help on her studies. And that they were from the tribe and uh, she won that, she won that scholarship and got to go to Europe. Yeah, and now she's in college at that Oklahoma Christian University. She's a junior there. Luther, Mr. Luther. Mr. Luther, we're going to call you in first, but give us about 10 minutes.